Sony Pictures Animation is one of the most experimental animation studios working in the industry, and probably one of my favorite animation studios of all time. Now, I know that sounds weird considering that they made this, but other than that, they're a pretty underrated studio in terms of creativity and style. Even though I would admit that mentioning the Emoji Movie is so annoying nowadays, I think it's very important to point it out. Before the Emoji Movie came out, they made some pretty hit or miss movies, especially when they made sequels. Hotel Transylvania, it was good, but I wouldn't call it as memorable as a sequel. Clouded with a Chance of Meatballs, definitely one of their best films, but building it as a franchise with a sequel in the series, probably not one of their best ideas considering that it felt like a one-off film more than anything else. What about Surf's Up? While it's really enjoyable, why did they need to make a direct-to-DVD sequel a decade later with WWE characters? I like milk and fish, cause I'm an otter, and otters like fish. I just wish oh you could go oh, 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 Milk of fish. <laughs> Open season. That was a shit franchise throughout. I couldn't even get to the fourth one because of how boring the third one was. Arthur Christmas was an amazing film, but that got bombed hard, sadly. I could go on and on about how hit or miss Sony Pictures Animation was at the time. It was brutal. So when they announced that they were going to make a movie about emojis, I thought to myself, they lost it. I think you guys already know my thoughts on the film by now. Plus, I don't want to give y'all emoji movie PTSD, so I'll keep it really brief. It's horrible. It's everything that an animated movie shouldn't be. It's predictable, but Land, has a dance party ending, has James Corden. It's such a whatever type of movie that's kind of insulting. And I think that you guys already know that already. But at the same time, I think that it changed the studio's point of view in a way of making films. Now, I'm not saying that it had a change of heart or a redemption arc of some sort. That's stupid, and I'm tired of people calling this a redemption arc. What did they redeem from exactly? One awful film? Also, stop blaming this movie for canceling the Popeye movie. If you will want to thank anybody who changed the studio around, thank Kristen Belson. She used to work for DreamWorks, now she's the president of the studio. And I do see a bunch of inspiration from DreamWorks here. Mostly from Cloudy and Hotel Transylvania, frankly. Also, look at her bio on Sony Pictures Animation's website. It's basically a thank you letter for not making any more emoji movies. But I do think that it's very interesting going from this, making a bland cash grab of a movie, to making an iconic game changer in the animation medium. Of course, we're talking about 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Not only one of my favorite animated films of all time, not only one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, it's also one of my favorite films of all time. It was so good, I bought it twice. I was about to buy the Best Buy one, but my mom said it was a waste of money. So, thank you, mom. I could go all fucking day talking about how creative, beautiful, and iconic this film is. And I honestly wouldn't even mind. I've talked about it before in my top 5 animated films of the 2010s, so again, I'll keep this one brief. But it's definitely a game changer in the animation industry. And it showcases what 3D animation could do in an amazing way since Toy Story debuted as the first 3D animated movie. I might be exaggerating a bit, but it's an amazing film. It did relatively well at the box office, and it did amazing critically, so of course Sony would greenlight a sequel, and I think that this decision was a good move. When I saw the trailer for Across the Spider-Verse, I cried, man. <laughs> It was beautiful. They threw a TV to my eye. And I don't know how they did it, but they made the animation look even better than the first one. It made me float in. No Way Home never did that. Well, that didn't age well. I just got back from No Way Home, and it's literally one of the best Spider-Man stories ever told. I wouldn't say it's as good as Spider-Verse, but it's definitely one of the best Spider-Man films ever told. Definitely go see it. And it's a two-parter. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh take my, my God, money. Take beautiful. my money. Take my money. Right now. Also, Miles and Gwen are fucking minors. Stop sexualizing them. They are fucking minors. Until the studio says so, they are minors. Okay? 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 Good? Anyway, it's safe to say that it changed Sony Pictures Animation for the better. Which is why we got the Mitchells vs. Machines in 2021.
Yeah, it was supposed to be called Connected, and then it was supposed to release in 2020, then quarantine happened, and I'd rather forget that whole experience, thank you very much. But anyways, Missile Twister Machines is an amazing time. I would say it's as good as Spider-Verse, which is something that I would never expect to say. It has a great message, breathtaking animation, and it doesn't use the phone bad approach. Nice. Let's be honest, if that did happen, the pocket stream meter would just go through the roof. Also, it gives me big cloudy with a chance to meet Balls and Ives. And no, it's not because Phil Lord and Chris Miller are involved. Mostly because of the similarities between stories and tone. It might seem like they're taking another movie's plot and shoehorning it in here, but no. It still has its differences even with the similarities. I'm not gonna go over them here, but please go watch The Missiles vs. The Machines on Netflix. It's really, really good. After that, they released Wish Dragon, a different take on the Aladdin story. And no, it's not a ripoff of Disney's Aladdin, even though they didn't create that story. Stop crediting Disney for everything, please and thank you. The story is about a college uh, delivery boy named Din. He finds a dragon named Long and hijinks ensues. It's a really damn good film, but I don't think that it's as memorable as other Sony Pictures animation films. And I know that Sony didn't make this film, but it lacks the charm of most Sony Pictures animation films out there. Again, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. There are definitely memorable moments. Plus, this guy. He could defeat Thanos with those legs. If there's going to be a sequel in the near future, I'm open to that. And it implies that we would get a new cast of characters. I would definitely love to see this as an anthology set of movies. Definitely would be cool to see. But now, we're gonna talk about Vivo. Now listen, this shit bangs. I think that this is one of the most beautiful looking Sony films I've seen in recent memory. The songs were done by Lin Manuel Miranda, and it touches on loss in a very cool way. The songs are really good too, even my own drum. Yes. I don't skip my own drum. Leave me the fuck alone. Although they should have just cut out that whole autotune break in the middle. It's so out of place. I want to say that it's my favorite film, but as it stands, it's really good. But as of right now, those are the new films that were released. But what about the older films? <laughs> No, we're not going to talk about you. you. You already got your phone. Now, we're going to talk about the ones I've seen. Sadly, I haven't seen that one Pirates film by Ardman, and we're not going to talk about those other Smurf movies. The animated one is fine, I guess, but those other two, yeah, yeah no, go away. Also, no live action hybrids. Surf's Up is a really cool mockumentary on surfing. It's funny and it has the great characters. I wouldn't call this one of my favorites, but I definitely enjoy this one. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. What can I not say about Cloudy with a chance of fucking meatballs? It's a really good film and it was released in 2009. I say that because it feels like it has an age a day when it first went to theaters. Every joke, every character, it feels so timeless. The animation is very fluid and I always forget that the art style is similar to clone eye which makes sense because this is also a lord and moa project if i had a top five this would be on my top two easily then you got arthur fucking christmas easily one of the most underrated christmas movies of all time even though it's technically not a sony film it was made by iron man and sony distributed it i'm still going to talk about it because i love this film it's about this kid named arthur fucking duck. Trying to give a kid a gift because his father, who was Santa by the way, forgot to bring it to her. It's almost everything a Christmas movie should be. Fun. It's kind of a bummer that this bombed up the box office, but I'm glad this got a resurgence in popularity as a cult classic around the 2010s. Please go check it out if you can no matter what time of the year it is. The whole Channel Transylvania series is odd. I like the first, but I don't think it's as good as the second, and then the third one was pretty mid. I'm not sure if I'm gonna see Transformia. It's not looking that interesting, to be quite honest with you. But again, I like the first, and I love the second due to the animation and how wacky it can get at times. With Drax trying to become a great grandpa, and Mavis trying to fit in as a human in the second, it's a really great film. The star, Angry Birds, starts up two wave me. What are these? I don't have anything else to say about these films they're not awful <laughs> but that's all there is to them they're just there they don't give me any lasting impressions other than they exist i wasn't a big angry birds fan growing up i was mostly a fruit ninja kid the star i'm not religious this should have been a directed dvd film frankly wave mania Ooh, what the fuck you haven't made a follow-up to one of your first films in the decade and this is it not worth it moving on Yeah. 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 Uh. 
those were all the mainline films they put out through the years. And though there were a few duds here and there, <coughs> there are a bunch of mangas that Sony has made in recent memory. Why am I talking about this? Well, mostly because I want to talk about Spider-Verse again. But seriously, I wanted to talk about the studio as of late because of the creative streak they've been having recently. Which you might because of the success of Spider-Verse. And I guess the Emoji Movie? I don't fucking know. But don't be fooled. There were some great films made by them before Spider-Verse. Like Cloudy, Hotel Transylvania, Surf's Up, Arthur fucking Christmas, like I said. They've got some talent up their sleeves over that Sony and it should never be overlooked. But I'm also very excited about Sony's future as well. Across the Spider-Verse is already a given, but they're planning to make mainstream adult animated films, which has been way overdue by now. Hopefully they'll be really good. I'm mostly looking forward to getting these Black Knight personally. And that K-pop one? It might be a manger. I'm not sure if the Mitchells are getting a sequel, but if so, I'll be open to it. But I would prefer it to have a Netflix series instead. I just don't want the Mitchells to get into that trap where most Sony Pictures anime films have been in nowadays where the sequel isn't as good as the first film. Same with Spider-Verse, but since it's gonna be a two-parter, I have no doubts that I wouldn't be good. Other than that, I'm very excited about Sony's future. They've always been a good studio in my eyes, but now they've fully up to their own potential. It's been a rocky road for them. They've been compared to Illumination in a couple of places, which I do not think is fair. Sony has always been stepping out of their comfort zone and making animated films. No film looks the same or similar. Even if you're a fan of Illumination, you gotta admit, they use the same tactics over and over again to make profit. And it works. I'm expecting this Mario movie to be garbage. Chris Pratt? <laughs> More like generic white guy. <laughs> but the real reason why I'm talking about Sony Pictures is to show that just because they made a few duds here and there, they're always open to the experiment. While not rare for an animation company, it's very cool to see. I think the animation studios that speak out to me personally when it comes to experimentation are Titmouse, Ghibli, Laika, or Ardman. If you haven't seen a Sony Pictures animation film, I'd recommend starting with Cloud with a Chance of Meatballs. It has a charm and wit that you would want in an animated film, especially if you're more into the comedic side. Things. Plus, there are a bunch of underrated one-liners on here that will make you quote them for days on end. I'm telling you, this is one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time. If you want to know my personal favorites, Spider-Verse, obviously, The Mitchell's Resistance Machines, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and Arthur Christmas. And that's pretty much it. I had a lot of fun talking about Sony Pictures Animation for about 10 minutes. Bro, you forgot one film. What? Sasha's Party. Are, are, are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious right now? Yeah. G get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs>